Hello everyone, and welcome back to Learning Feed the Beast. Now today I've got a lot of plans to do lots of machines, but first of all I've been searching out for indigo plants. This will be important soon, and I've come across a tube with cobwebs on. Now these are very cool, because these have chests underneath them, and also spawners, so we've got to be careful with these. We'll go out of hover mode, we'll see what's here. Just, I know there is a spawn around here. Oop, that was convenient. So we might want to keep that spawner. Oh, we have to break it. No, we don't want a cave spider spawner. Punch one, saddle, a eh, bit of junk. Oh, it was worth it. You can get um, logic matrixes in there, which are quite important later on. But, meh, that's okay for now. So, as you see on my minimap, I have a zombie spawner. Yes, and it's right next to where I was doing my turtling and where I've made my little bit of a base, which is very convenient. So I will be looking at making a load of soul shards today and then I'll be looking at monsters to combine them with on an anvil with some levels to make some level 5, well tier 5 spawners of whatever I want. So maybe I can get one for a witch I can get one for blaze. Blaze are quite easy anyway. I can get one for cows. I can get unlimited food that way. I can do all sorts. I even got one here for a slime. So if I just grind up a whole load of zombies, then I can get loads of tier 5 zombie spawners and the shards. And those shards you can just combine with any other level 1 on Nanville and get level 5 or whatever you choose. Which is a really nice thing to have at the moment. I don't know how long it will stay in here. You can see it's down there. But that is my plan to start off with. And um, it goes down here. Here I've just moved around some things. I got told that um, the energy for the electrical solar panels don't actually need the wires. And that's true. I put them together like so. And I just cleared out a little bit here. Moved some things around slightly. Made some more chests. But yeah, I'm going to get on with this zombie spawner. And I'll get back to you when I've got a load to show you the sweet sound of zombies. <laughs> this is great. I'll show you how I set this up in a minute, but this soul shard is four kills away from being level five. And there it is, level five, tier five. Now, I've got to combine it with something now to make a usable spawner. I'll turn them off though, because I don't really want a zombie spawner, they're not going to give me much from, from maybe some experience. But I don't really need that, considering I can kill them here, like so, as you can see my levels. What I do need is a really easy and lazy food source for this Let's Play. And also I need books. All these levels are on me because I can't really enchant much, I can't get a decent sword. So what I plan to do now is change this into a cow spawner. I did locate one cow from in the valley and brought it back to the base and I'm going to combine that and then now I can get loads of bookcases and do some enchanting make some vile swords and enchant them hopefully for soul stealer and then I can come back here and get some more spawners really really quickly so I'm just going to kill these and then I'll show you how I did the spawner okay they're gone now they keep coming back but they're gone for now and all I've got in here is a water trap. So I was looking here after I eat. It's down here. And get pickaxe out. That'll do. In here, all it is is a spawner. Comes down in a water trap. This is probably my favourite water trap that I do. Push them all down to the middle. They go through a little shaft. Then they go up the water elevator there. And then across a little tiny bit and then back down. Nice and simple. I think I've done it for just about every single little series that I've done. But yep, that was very effective and they do build up quite quickly. I spent quite a little time here AFKing for these, but I was doing other stuff as well. And I thought if I just cut that out, it'd be nice and <laughs> a lot better to watch. So now to change this to a T5, for tier 5, cow spawner. And I have died a couple of times it since the last time. I did lose the turtle unfortunately to actually a bug but 
that's not very important. And I did lose my boots. So I have to get them back when I get some more diamonds. At the moment I'm diamondless. I think I'll be back when the rain's gone. And it's daytime again. Okay, okay. I went caving and I got some more diamonds. I got five more and made some more soul shards. So with this one I can go kill a cow. Which I have one over here. Come here cow, come here cow. Now I don't have to kill him with the shard, I'm just going to poke him with it. There we are. Cow tier 1. Now we need to get an anvil. Now, getting blocks is a bit different. I don't think I have a compressor. Oh, I do have a compressor. Oh, very good, very good. I was nearly going to get a, in a muddle there. So I need some iron. I did make a load of stuff between episodes. I only got nine iron in there. I'll cook some up while I wait. So I'll be back with you when I've got enough for an anvil. Okay, so I've got the iron for that. And while we're here, we're going to make a project table. Now these are basically crafting tables with storage. Someone asked me to do this and they're okay. They're good for some things. And we'll be looking at how to use these properly later. So put him in. Oh, let's put him in there. And I've got a spare one here just in case I want one. Actually, I have to mine that. And we'll just put him in here. Now these they have inventory, so you can put an item up here. And I'm just gonna put. Yeah, I'll do this example. These corrupted fragments are from cooking iron in the soul forge with the corrupted essence. Take that out there. And these is what you need to get extra souls on your soul shards when you kill your mobs once you've enchanted the blades. So we'll do that and then from here we can just shift click and make as many as they can from that. So that's how the, that basically works. There's not much more to that apart from you can put paper in here. With the indigo dye we collected earlier and make a plan. So all you do is put the plan in and then take them out. You don't need to put them in here at all. And we'll look at that later on. So I've got these corrupted ingots now. I can make a nice sword. If I had any sticks on me, I just do. So just make some swords here. Now these is what I'm going to be using to collect loads more souls to make some more tier 5 spawners. And this energy here, even though it's a tiny little setup, it makes enough to recharge my backpack now and then. When I come back, I've been swapping two around. And no, it's pretty pathetic. So we're definitely looking at a better way of making some energy from that, which would be pretty cool. So we've got our vile swords, now we want to make our anvil and our creeper spawner. Later on. My bad, I meant cow spawner. Creeper spawner can come later, so can all the other ones. So put this anvil down, like so. We have a cow, one killed. Zombie, full one goes to tier 5, you can rename it but I won't. Now with that I need to make a, an iron cage so you just do iron bars and then I believe it's just a round of this if I remember. I haven't made these in a while. There you are, soul cage. Now tier 5's you can turn on and off with redstone. So if I just get a lever, um, probably just make a lever in my inventory actually. That'd be easier. Make some levers never need <laughs> less levers than that so if we just put some cows somewhere mm, I'm gonna make a drop and then I'll be back with you for these so there we are, I'd pill it up and put it up here now the lever does control it because it's a tier 5 like so and now cows start dropping now with tier 5 they can spawn in the day and they spawn 4 cows every 2 seconds if there's enough space on the spawning. Now these blocks here are covered up so they will spawn slightly less if they transspawn there. That's just so they don't get stuck on top of the spawner. So now I've got my unlimited food. It's not cooked but we can sort that out later with a lava blade or such. But at the moment I'm okay with that and I've got enough leather now to make my maximum bookshelves. And then I can enchant some vile swords. I think I'll be back with you once I've done some more enchanting and bookmaking. Okay, I've been killing lots of zombies 
and using the levels for enchantments on the swords, hoping for a soul stealer sword, therefore the kills would give more souls per kill, basically. And first one was a disjunction and Vorpal knockback sword, and Vorpal is the one that gives you heads, so I've got six zombie heads from that amount of usage, and they don't stack anymore. <laughs> They were stacking because they put one on my head and then when more dropped they obviously got stacked there as well. So that's a pretty bad sword for what we're doing. And then I went and got a Vorpal 2 Smite 5 which is also an awful sword. Then I went and got a Fire Aspect 2 which is also an awful sword. Then I just got this one. Sharpness 4, Soul Stealer 4. So I could combine that with other ones to get a even better one but none of these I've got sharpness on. But we will keep this one here and we will try and repair it because every kill we get we will get more souls. At the moment I'm on 410. If I just pop back down there. Then whenever I kill one of these zombies I get extra souls. At the moment I'm on 410 with the soul steal of 4. That's one kill. Gives you 5. And you can combine it on anvils to get Soul Steel of 5 I believe and that would give you even more but these you can just repair like a normal sword on an anvil but using the corrupt ingots that you made these out of and I'll probably combine these with these when this gets low just to save on the ingots but I'm going to be using this from now on to get really fast spawners so you see it's already on 440 and it's only killed a few so instead of having to kill over a thousand legitly I have to only kill about 500 now 500? 200! There we are. So 200 kills, so they're 5 times as fast. So I'm going to get these two up to 1000 kills each. And I'm going to make a slime spawner. And I might make the wither skeleton spawner. I might use it as coal to power the area for a while. Could be fun. So, I'll be back with you when I've got that done. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try a few things here. I tried using a dispenser to throw splash potions on these with the vile sword and you don't even get the experience, you don't get a single soul off of them but at the moment I'm on 560 if I throw this and then swap that finished off that whole <laughs> whole thing there was about 105 there that finished off the whole of that and started a new one so that was over 500 kills, or about 500 ish so yeah, that works out well. So definitely be using splash potions from now on and get unlimited soul stealer on that. So no need to combine these or such. But I could use it in the future to try and get a better one of these. But yeah, I'm going to keep going with this and do a few more. I might use all of these actually. And then we'll see what ones I come up with as um, final spawners. Okay, so I've been grinding for a while and I have quite a few level 5 zombies. I've even got a villager one by accident. But oh well. So I'm going to make these into tier 5s. I could go get an easy blaze one by throw, flying around the nether. But I'd rather not load it all up and seeing as we may get the quartz I guess. There might be reason not to. So we'll combine that and get a blaze one. We'll combine this one and get a slime one. We've got a wither skeleton one. And we'll do this one, which is this one. This is a creeper. So we've now got a creeper with a skeleton, slime, blaze, and cow. I think that's enough for now. <laughs> the blaze we can use for power. Slime we can use for um, rubber. You can make the rubber out of the slime balls if you cook it and then do the same process as before. And with a skeleton, skulls, coal, energy, beacons. Creepers, gunpowder, TNT, awesomeness. Could be fun. So, what we need to do is think of a setup now that can generate lots of energy and start making lots of more advanced machines because at the moment these are very, very basic. And this power source here is plenty enough to power up my jetpacks now and then. As you see, they're actually storing up extra energy here just off of four tiny little turbines. They're not the way to go for mass energy, neither are these, although these are very nice for powering some engines. They're very nice to convert straight to MJ. Um, I do like them, they are very nice for that, and they would be worth just expanding that and using it for um, these thermal engines. 
<laughs> um, thermal expansion machines but also the red conduits are good as well but we've not really got enough power to start using them and if you don't know what I mean, don't worry, I'll talk to that in a while maybe not this episode so we've got to think of a way to power lots of things now, someone said why didn't you make the normal solar panels the non ones like this and we're going to here, we've got solar panels they're not that expensive, you need generators for each just like we had for them up there but through these you need silicone plates and through them you can only get them through an industrial blast furnace and if we look up blast furnace you'll see that it needs an in of 128 EU per tick and we're not even generating 32 so it's going up very very slowly, it's ridiculously slow but that's enough to charge the backpack so it's okay and from that we need to also make coils and from that we need a rolling machine now rolling machine is easy and cheap but it's the problem with the power still, we need something powerful enough to keep this constantly powered otherwise you can't make any solar panels so that's where these spawners come in because they're a very very easy way to get enough fuel to put into generators or other things and power them up and create lots of power and store it and then to use it so that's what we're going to plan to begin with and I'm going to make a blaze spawner cage somewhere here and I'll get back to you when it's done and I'm going to set up some tubing and some pipes and such then I'm going to go through with you how it works, why it works and then what the setup's going to be for the rest of the base so back in a bit okay so I've done quite a bit of work and it's taken me a bit longer than I expected I've made a cage for the blaze to go in now these level 5 spawners can spawn four in any direction basically so four this way, four that way, four up, four down so this gives enough space for that it does block some of the spaces with water but that's what you have to do with the blaze spawner give you a little peek in here so this is just water it's not 100% efficient, there are gaps here where if they died here then their blaze would stay here but the likeness of them going there is very small and the amount we'll actually get from this you won't be bothered about a little bit being lost now and then so this is quite an efficient design I did on the other world as well a little bit different here though comes down to the middle so it's all going to the middle here and this is an open fence gate goes onto an obsidian pipe now that's just two bits of obsidian with a piece of glass in the middle and they're pretty cheap but basically obsidian pipe when items go into them they go into them basically so if an item goes on top of it, if I just throw a thing there, it goes into it. So it's basically a sucky pipe. Just like that though, it will suck anything in that lands directly on top of it. If you put engines and stuff attached to that, then they will suck a wider area basically. Then the gold pipes there are the same thing but gold for the ingredients. And they are fast pipes basically. And then they go forward onto cobblestone pipes, which are the black ones. And there was a little tiny box here, I did by using the diamond saw and just making the smaller micro blocks. Not too exciting for that. And on top here I have a way of turning the spawn on and off. This uses the red power wiring and the red alloy, red alloy wire. That's just using three pieces of red alloy in a row and you get wires from it. And you just get that from the alloy furnace, they're pretty cheap and here I'll turn it on and off works just like normal redstone but it's a little bit better <laughs> more convenient anyway so that spawner is ready to be filled but if we filled it now then all these blades would be coming around and we wouldn't have anything to do with the blaze rods so the pipe leads down here goes into a relay now these are basically what you have in vanilla as a hopper so an item will go in here and then be sent out along the pipes and it will be put into the first available spot so it should be that one there, yep and these are the generators so <laughs> very simply this is a relay that sends the items along these pneumatic pipes is needed here because the relay converts the pipes you can't put these pipes directly into those pipes, they're a different mod so the relay goes between them and anyway the relay buffers up and then sends them out if there's no space anywhere at all then they would accumulate in here and then when there was space it would send them through 
So it's a nice buffer and a converter between the different pipe types. Now, humatic pipes, items will go into the first available. So it comes up here, that's the closest, it'll go in there first, then it'll go in there or there, and then it moves its way along here. When all of these generators are full, then it'll come to the barrels. Now, barrels have to be filled from the top. I think I may have mentioned that before. So basically, all the generators will be on, and then the overflow will be stored. And we probably won't need this place spawn on very much when we do set it up because it's going to produce a lot of energy. But we need to do something with these generators to then store energy. So we could make some bat boxes, but they'll be filled up pretty quickly. I think I have some blaze rods around here. There we are. So that produces 6,000 EU each. When a bat box only holds 40,000, that's like six and a half blaze rods burnt and you've filled your bat box up. So not a very convenient storage method. Only uses 40,000 total. So we want to make a higher capacity storage and that's our MFE and we're going to make this actually on my thing here. Energy crystals, insulated gold cable and your machine block that you've seen before. Now there is a bit of a cheaper way of doing this where I'll show you here and that's just doing the outside. I want to make quite a few of these so I'll just go ahead and make a few. And I did go and get some more diamonds, whoops. And that was an <laughs> I had to do it really because I ran out of stuff for it. And yeah. More diamonds always better. And I had my um fortune picks. When I was doing the zombies before, I was then throwing the potion, coming back up here, enchanting something, and then going back. So I had a couple of pickaxes that were okay. So the relay actually in there is this. I'm sure you can look up a relay if you just go on this. Really, really, really relay. So it's just a transposer and the rest of it. I'm sure you can find that one out. And then for this, we need to make the energy crystals. And you can make these with diamonds or you can make them with rubies. And you know which one's more sensible then. <laughs> rubies are much cheaper. So there are, just make four. And in this, okay, I mean more than four. But we do one for the moment just to show you what's happening. So, machine block in the middle, and four of these. This is the MFE. Now, it works the same as these, where these have little dots, they're actually facing downwards at the moment. That's where the power goes out. On every other side, power goes in. So I'm going to go wire that one up over there and throw some coal in just to show you. For the moment, that's generating electricity there. Well, I'm going to call it electricity, it's actually EU. So these can make energy here and I can put them on top. I think I will put one here just as a convenience so I'll charge my backpacks with it. When we move forward with this let's play I want to move everything underground and I want not to see these so I want to make it nice and pretty but for the moment this would be our charging up station. So here energy goes in each side and goes out of that dot. So put a wire on that then it will go to whatever machines I want. But this one here is only going to be a charging station. So let's put some coal in here to show you here. It's starting to charge up and this holds 600,000. Which is 15 times the capacity of a bat box. But not really many butts. <laughs> Apart from this will then give out 1 to 8. Which is what we needed for our blast furnace if you remember. Which I think we'll be doing soon. Not today though. And as this fills up this will give it 1 to 8, but if you plug this into a normal machine over there, where these IC2 ones use 32, these ones use 32, and so is that one, then you would make them explode. And that's a very bad thing. So, next time, I'm going to go through with you how to step down these levels of energy into usable packets for the lower level machines and also going towards the higher level machines. Okay, so I'm back after a break, and I've done a bit of work. This spawn is ready to be turned on. I've got my Blaze Tier 5. Before we do that, I'm going to show you something over here, which I did promise at the start of the video, with these workbenches, or project tables. And in here, we're going to make a piece of paper. So we just get some paper here, and then with that we put indigo dye on that. You can make a blank plan. So make some of them. 
and then what you do is put one of them into this slot here and you press that one that is now a relay plan so I can dump all this out of here and say this is what you need if there's something missing from that it will say it's not there but here I can just make however many I want until you start missing something so that's a really nice way of doing things that you make a lot but you may not want to have too many of these in your work table or your project table at any one time so you've got to think about which ones you use plans for and which ones you do out of memory to be honest and other news, I got my first piece of Iridium ore now we are in version 7 at the moment next episode I think we'll be in version 9 because we're upgrading the server so you cannot do the platinum trick anymore to get really free Iridium we're going to do it the hard way no, we're going to really grind this out and get the Iridium that way because Iridium is incredibly rare in the soil so just before we go turn this baby on I have some things here so I've got my two zombie ones here ready to be combined now I've got an enderman one, a zombie pikmin one and a spider I think I might have an enderman one and zombie pikmin one now and do a spider another time because this flax does give me some string and that means ender pearls, ender chests and really does mean a lot of things from enderman spawner but it would take a little bit of work to set up so that's really cool stuff that we can do with them and um, we've got all the other stuff we can set up for all sorts of things but today we're just looking at this yeah so I think that's all I wanted to say this is pretty nice pretty nice just gotta turn it on safely so which way am I going in? mm-hmm I go in here and I have some blocks on me so we'll just use these for the moment so all you do is right click your shard into it and it's like so and they will just start spawning but this one has a redstone signal on so it's not going to spawn yet and we're ready for this there we are so they start to die and we'll check if this water setup actually works how I wanted it to because I haven't tested it I was just going on assumptions there we are and we'll see what's coming out of here so if it's come down here you'll see them coming through the pipes just like so they get whizzed long after they get to here whizz come to the relays, the relays then pass them on convert the pipes also and they come to here now where are they coming from that? let me see, let me see you're going straight into here oh you're into the wrong slot that's not very good is it? we have to mess around with that so these pipes need to go into the bottom of these not the side okay good to know see they're in there, they'll start making energy so these generators I will, once I made some energy into these MFEs I will move all these generators down underneath the ground out of sight so all you'd have is some barrels for extra and all the energy will be made underneath and then sent to MFEs separately and I'm gonna make a whole load of these for next time and next time I'm really gonna move on with the machines, I did promise that at the beginning of today and also I'm gonna be looking at how to do the biofuel and do the bio <laughs> the whole setup for that because a lot of people want to see that but you need a lot of resources to do a large setup to actually power an area I know because we've been playing a lot of it on the server and I've got quite a lot of ores and things set up so far from my turtle and I will set him up again, I did make another one and I made some more boots so they will be going and basically once we get to our blast furnace we shouldn't take too long we can make our first quarries and then I can have lots of them running around all the place and we can just pile in resources and get a lot of stuff done at the moment I feel I have been going a bit slow but I'm just trying to get the initial things set up and then I can really show you en masse how to convert the energies, how to build the things and so on but anyway this is how we can do some cheap energy for the moment we'll probably turn this off and convert to biofuel or some other energy source later on in the game but for the moment this will be a very nice jump start so yeah I will sort out these pipes for the next time as well so thank you very much for joining me like I said next episode should be version 9 nice up to date and uh, now if you do like this series do support it do give it a like and all that I'm only doing this if it gets enough likes and this to carry on um, 
Yeah, so thank you very much for joining me, guys, and I'll see you next time.